If you're a fan of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, you are going to love this recipe. It is so easy to make and you can do all kinds of things. You can make little patties out of them, turn them into egg shaped and decorate them for Easter. It's so versatile and so easy and you only need four ingredients. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today we're gonna make some homemade peanut butter eggs. You will not believe how easy these are to make. And the great thing is you can add little special touches. I'm gonna to show you one of my favorites in just a bit. Okay, so you only need three ingredients to make the base of the peanut butter egg. And then of course you're gonna need some chocolate to dip it in. So what I have here is one cup of creamy peanut butter. Now you can use crunchy peanut butter if you like, but the outside of your eggs when they get covered with chocolate won't be as smooth. But I think it would be delicious. Okay, so one cup of the creamy peanut butter, quarter cup of salted butter. Now, if you wanted to use unsalted butter, you certainly can. You would just wanna add maybe a pinch or two of salt just to kind of boost the flavors. And then we add some powdered sugar. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and use a hand mixer, or you could use a stand mixer, or you could use a wooden spoon, uh, anything will work and we're gonna blend this together. Then we're gonna slowly add in the powdered sugar until it reaches the correct consistency. Now you could throw in a splash of vanilla extract if you like. However, what I found is that that little bit of extra liquid requires the addition of quite a bit more of the powdered sugar to get to the right consistency. And I thought the eggs were just too sweet. So I leave it out, but that's totally up to you. All right, then I'm gonna use the hand mixer and your butter should be room temperature. That will make it a lot easier. But I don't recommend melting it because that really leaves an oily mixture and again, it requires more of the powdered sugar. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna use the same uh, thing to just scrape down the sides and just make sure that all the butter is incorporated. There's no large chunks of it left. And this looks pretty good. Now I do see some smaller chunks of the butter. That's perfectly fine. They'll get blended in as we add in the powdered sugar. Okay, so I like to start out with measuring out two cups of powdered sugar, but I don't use all of it, okay? Usually I use about a cup and a quarter to a cup and a half. Just measure out about a half, and you wanna add this in in small additions, so a half of a cup at a time. Make sure if you're using a hand mixer or a stand mixer, you do this on slow speed so you don't get your powdered sugar everywhere. All right, that looks good. And we'll add in the next half of a cup. The mixture's getting stiffer and stiffer, but it's still not quite ready because it would be very sticky, hard to form your eggs. Now, if you had a mold that you were using, you could certainly stop here, put your peanut butter mixture into the mold, pop it in the freezer, and then pop them out. That would be fine. But I'm not using a mold today, so I'm gonna do this by hand. So I need it to be a little bit stiffer. Scrape down the sides again. Oh yeah, it's nice and stiff now. This should work perfectly fine. Now, if you wanted it to be a little bit stiffer, you can certainly add in more of the powdered sugar. That's perfectly fine, but this will work. Now it's really not sticking at all to my fingers and that's what we want. Okay, so now we are done. We can make up our eggs or you can add this little special touch that I happen to love and that is little bits of pretzels take something like a rolling pin or I'm using my meat tenderizer and just start to break them up. You don't want them to be powder, but you don't want them to be really big pieces either or your chocolate's not gonna be as smooth on the outside. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take out two spoonfuls here before I even add in or scoopfuls, I should say, before I add in the pretzels, just so I can show you the difference in the way that they look when they're fully decorated. This is about two tablespoons of the mixture. So let me just 
Let's go ahead and put those out onto this tray. All right, that's great. And now the rest, we'll get the pretzels. And I go more by looks here than anything else. So I'll just sprinkle in some. That's probably about a quarter of a cup. So a half of a cup looks good. And then just fold this in. All right, that looks good. And now I'm gonna scoop out the rest of the eggs here. All right, now to shape them, what I like to do is put another piece of parchment over top and just gently press them down. Now don't worry, they're gonna be in circles right now. That's perfectly fine. We're gonna shape them into the egg shape in just a minute. You can make them as thick or as thin as you like. That's totally up to you. And then we shape them. So what I like to do is take two butter knives and dip them into the powdered sugar, just in case these are a little sticky. And then I can run my knife around the sides and sort of shape them into the egg shape. All right, that looks pretty good. Now what I've noticed here is that it was sticking a little bit more than I would like. It could be because it's warm here in my kitchen right now. So I'm gonna pop the rest of them into the refrigerator, but you can see how I was able to shape it into the form of an egg. So let me get these onto the sheet pan, into the refrigerator, just for about 10 minutes, and then I'll shape the rest of them up. All right, there we go. I will repeat this process for the rest of them and then they will go into the freezer for about 30 minutes. So while those are in the freezer, I'm gonna get the Ninja Foodie set up as a double boiler so that we can melt our chocolate for dipping. All right, so now let's melt our chocolate. Now, before I get into the types of chocolate that I'm gonna use, I want to explain how I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodi as a double boiler. But if you don't have the Ninja Foodi, no worries. You can use a pot and another bowl on the stove, or if you have a standalone double boiler that goes on the stove, you can use that. You can even melt the chocolate in the microwave, but you just wanna make sure you don't overheat it so it doesn't seize up. So do it in very short intervals and stir in between. All right, for me, I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodi because I like to use the sear saute to get the water boiling to produce steam to gently melt the chocolate. So I'm gonna put in two cups of water into the inner pot, and then I have a large mixing bowl that will fit right on top, okay? So I can just put my chocolate right here. You want to make sure that you don't use so much water that it touches your bowl, okay? You wanna make sure that there's several inches between the water and the bottom of your bowl because if the bottom of the bowl gets too hot, your chocolate will seize as well and then it becomes you know, impossible to use for dipping chocolate. So we're gonna start off with this and I'm gonna use sear saute and high to start with, but I will be changing that. I'll be decreasing that once we get some good steam going. Now the other thing that I wanna say is if you don't have a large enough mixing bowl, you wanna use your Ninja Foodi or your Instant Pot to act as a double boiler, you can do that, no problems. Use a rack or some kind of a trivet, put your bowl on top, and then you want to kind of seal around the edges with some foil so you're not letting all the steam escape, okay? A little bit of steam coming out from around the sides is perfectly fine, but if you're losing a lot of that heat, it's just gonna take longer for your chocolate to melt. All right, now let's talk about the chocolate that I'm using. I like to keep things really simple. Yes, a good quality chocolate bar that's tempered is going to give you the best flavor, gonna give you a hard candy coating, it's gonna be delicious, but I don't ever have those kind of chocolate bars here at home. And in the grocery store, I can't really find them where I live. So what I use is 12 ounces of Ghirardelli dark chocolate chips. You could use semi-sweet, you can use milk chocolate, whatever you like, but I like the dark chocolate. And then I also use 12 ounces of the Ghirardelli 
melting wafers. Now you can use all melting wafers if you want, but what I find is they don't really have that true chocolate taste, especially some of the other brands that I've tried. My favorite are definitely the Ghirardelli of the melting wafers. Um, but when you mix them with the dark chocolate, you get a nice smooth, dipping chocolate that has just a little bit more chocolate punch and you don't have to worry about tempering it or anything like that. All right, so let's let this heat up and we'll put in our chocolate chips. The water started boiling underneath. I added the chocolate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my temperature down to medium, all right? And now we just wait for it to gently melt. It's already starting here on the bottom. Now, if you wanna use all chocolate chips because that's what you have on hand and your mixture does not get thin enough to evenly coat the candy that you're dipping, you can always add a little bit of Crisco if you have it or a little bit of coconut oil to thin it out some. The coconut oil works great. I wouldn't use any other kinds of oils because they stay in liquid form, but the coconut oil will actually harden as it cools, just like Crisco does. So either one of those are good options. So we're still boiling, even though I went down to medium. So I'm gonna take my temperature down to low and that should stop that boiling. The one thing you wanna avoid at all cost is getting any water into your chocolate. So I don't want this steam to start to rise up, cool down, become liquid and end up in my chocolate or that will also cause it to seize up and I won't be able to use it for dipping. So when I see this much steam coming out, definitely want to lower the temperature. The other thing you can do is take your glass bowl and the edges are not hot here, okay? You can take your glass bowl off until it kind of settles down a little bit. And the residual heat from the steam underneath will continue to melt this chocolate even though it's not over the uh, direct steam. All right, that's calmed down. So now I can go ahead and put my bowl back over and let it finish melting. All right, so it looks like we are just about melted. There's a few pieces in here that still have to um, completely melt, but for the most part, it's looking really good. So now I'm ready to dip my eggs, which are still in the freezer. So I'm gonna go grab those along with a few little decorations, and then we're gonna get to dipping these homemade peanut butter eggs. So work with one tray at a time, leave the others in the freezer until you're finished with this one so that the peanut butter mixture does not start to warm up too much. What I like to do, because now these are nice and hard, they've been in the freezer for about 30 minutes. So what I do is just put it right in the chocolate, but just on the bottom. And Ollie will explain that in just a minute and then put it back on my tray to cool. And I do this with my fingers. I find this to be the best way, and this is why. Every time I go to dip using a fork, what tends to happen is when I try to scoot it off the fork, I end up with fork lines underneath my candy. So I found by just dipping it first in the chocolate, just on the bottom, we can prevent that. So that's what I'm gonna do, and then this, gets put back in the freezer or in the refrigerator. It doesn't really matter um, while I do the other uh, two trays that I have. And then we get to dipping and decorating the tops. All right, so now you wanna make sure that your chocolate is still a really nice consistency, okay? That it's nice and melted and runny. If it's getting a little bit thicker, then your heat is too low. You might want to uh, you know, bump it up a little bit and let it get nice and melted. Uh, and I also started off with a new pan with new parchment, and that is because I have some powdered sugar on my trays and I don't want them to get into the chocolate. So I'm just starting out with clean. That's totally optional. So now that we have these frozen ones that have the bottoms done, and you can see a little bit of powdered sugar got on those, but that won't hurt anything. Now we can put them onto a fork. You can also break off any extra that went around the edges if you wanna have really clean edges. So now we put it on the fork, 
Then I like to take some sort of a scoop. You can even use your spatula if you wanted to, um, but I find this scoop, I can get a nice scoop of chocolate, go over it once and let it all the excess drip off. I don't use a metal spoon, although you can, and that is just because the metal spoon cools the chocolate pretty quickly, and that can cause some thickness, and some. it just gets a little bit harder to coat. All right, so I'll just take one scoop of the chocolate, pour it directly over, make sure you cover all the edges, and then you wanna let this excess drip off and then I use a little knife and push it off onto the parchment, okay? All right, there we go. If there's any edges that you see that still have peanut butter that maybe we just kind of got the chocolate pushed off when we got it off of the knife, just go ahead and put it back on. And there we go, all right? So there's one. Now you want to decorate them right away if you're gonna decorate the chocolate. So you can grab whatever color sprinkles you have, you know, um, Jimmy's work really well. Anything that you wanna put on your eggs, you certainly can. And then just sort of move them around so that they are in a pattern that you like. I try not to be too fussy about it. Maybe I'll add a little bit of Jimmy's, make this one a really colorful one. Cover up the mistake where I added too many. And there you go, there's one of our eggs. Now I'm gonna repeat this process for all six of these, get a few other decorations on there, and then I'm gonna show you how to do a different style of decoration for your peanut butter uh, eggs. Now another option, since we have pretzels inside of these, although you know what? I don't remember which one doesn't have pretzels. Oh, isn't that funny? They basically turned out the same, so I can't even tell. Uh, but anyway, you can also take a pretzel, dip it in some chocolate, put it on top, and then put some little decorations on it. Like that, that's cute. You can also take some chocolate and just put a little bit of, you know, a stripe or something like that. And then put crushed pretzels on top if you wanted. I think I might have put too many, but you get the you get the idea. Just another little way that you can make some decorations. I think that's my least favorite so far. And then I'm gonna do something else with the rest of these. So I'm gonna let the chocolate harden completely before I decorate them. All right, so the last tray is done. And you can see I've left several without any decorations, and that's because I'm gonna add some different accents to those once the chocolate's fully set. So for now, I'm just gonna leave everything on the counter. The Ninja Foodie has turned itself off, and that's perfectly fine. Um, it does that after a certain period of time on the sear saute, I think it's 60 minutes, then it'll just turn itself off. If you still had more chocolate to dip, just go ahead and restart the sear saute on low and it will keep your chocolate the perfect dipping consistency for as long as you need it to be. All right, now that the chocolate has pretty much set on these four eggs, I'm gonna do a different kind of design. So I took my white chocolate, I reheated it again so that it is kind of a nice, you know, thin consistency here. And I'm gonna take it and I'm going to go like this across the egg. If you need to come back over, it's perfectly fine. If you wanna go a little bit thicker, it's perfectly fine. There's no right or wrong here. All right, but now quickly, while the chocolate is still you know, hasn't set yet, put your sprinkles 
over top. Now don't worry that they fell onto the dark chocolate. Once the white chocolate hardens, they will only stick to the white chocolate. So that's just a different kind of look. So there's tons of things you could do. All right, now I do have some chocolate left over. So there's a couple things you could do. You could put it into a container and just store it for later and reheat it with some additional chocolate the next time you wanna use it to dip candy. Or you can make little treats with pretzels. So let me show you, I'm just using stuff that I have here at my house. So let me put these in. So fill the little holes. This is a favorite that I uh, like to make around Christmas time because you can make it with white chocolate or dark chocolate, doesn't really matter, whichever you prefer. And then of course, at Christmas, I use Christmas M&Ms. These are Reese's Pieces. So put some yellow in there since we're kind of doing Easter, which I don't know if that's really Easter. It's more like Halloween to me, but you get the drift. So that's pretty easy. You could do it with the white chocolate. You could do it with the dark chocolate, whatever you prefer. And they make really nice little snacks that you can make up ahead of time. So if you're having an hors d'oeuvre party or something like that, you wanted to have little individual like snack-like kind of desserts, they work great. All right, so once your eggs have been, um, you know, set on the counter for about an hour or so, they should be ready to get them cleaned up for your platter. What I do is take a knife and a fork and just gently lift them and put them on your platter. And I'll repeat that for all of these. Real quick though, let me just show you. So these are the ones that I had let the chocolate set and then put white chocolate on. So if you just move it upside down, the jimmies will fall off of where the dark chocolate had already set up. Just move that up like that, and then put that right there. All right, so there we have them all plated up and ready to serve. Now I'm gonna taste one. So let me just go ahead and cut this straight down. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. And I love the pretzels inside. They look just like peanut butter cups. Oh, I just, well, they don't look like peanut butter cups. They look like peanut butter eggs, but you know what I mean. All right, let's taste. Mmm. They're better than peanut butter cups. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Now my chocolate's still a little bit soft. I would let it set up a little bit longer. I think it's just a little warm in the kitchen today. But they are absolutely delicious. Super easy to make, and you can decorate them any way you like. So you can make them into different shapes and decorate for different holidays. This is definitely a recipe that you wanna keep and make often.